These two men have entered the chat about the U.S. presidential election. The death of opposition figure Alexei Navalny in a Russian prison has sharpened U.S. political rhetoric around Russian President Vladimir Putin and his invasion of Ukraine, exposing a clear divide between President Joe Biden and his top challenger for the job, Donald Trump. Biden has been quick to lay blame and threaten stiff sanctions over Navalny's death in an Arctic penal colony, which Russian officials attribute to sudden death syndrome. The fact of the matter is, Putin is responsible. Whether he ordered it or not, he is responsible for the circumstances that put that man in. And he is, is, is a reflection of who he is. And it just cannot be tolerated. I said there would be a price to pay. The Kremlin said the allegation is unfounded and insolent, and authorities have denied Navalny's mother access to his body. Trump and his Republican Party have taken a different line, with Trump saying he would not support NATO as strongly as Biden has. And in a recent event with Fox News, he cast himself as a victim of political persecution, like Navalny. And it's a horrible thing, but it's happening in our country, too. Uh, we are turning into a communist country in many ways, and if you look at it, I'm the leading candidate. I got indicted. I never heard of being indicted before. I was going. I got indicted four times. I have eight or nine trials, all because of the fact that I'm. And you know this, all because of the fact that I'm in politics. Trump was vague on how he'd end Russia's war on Ukraine. Instead, saying that if he had been president, Putin would never have invaded. Republicans have questioned why they should fund the conflict. Russian forces recently captured a key city, which the White House points to as proof that Ukrainian forces need urgent help. Some Republicans are confident they will pass the stalled $95 billion aid package. Most of it is for Ukraine. I think the slow response from Europe and the United States, of course that hurts Ukraine. And that's why we can't let this happen, why we're going to get something done. Meanwhile, the war has taken on greater significance. This has become about America. What is, will America continue to play the role of a power that that keeps its promises, that respects its alliances, and that is capable of projecting strength? Or is America over as a serious power? That's the question now. It's, it's no longer about Russia or Ukraine. Moscow and Washington are nearly 5,000 miles apart. But as the U.S. hurdles toward November, their fates are more intertwined than ever. Anita Powell, VOA News.